welcome to Penn's Pals today. Boys and girls at home and boys and girls here in our studio, thank you for joining us today. Today we have a very special friend with us. Would you like to share who our friend is? Today our special author is Christina Cody and she lives in Groton, Connecticut about an hour away from here. She came a whole hour to share her story with us. And we're gonna introduce her in a few minutes. And her book is called The Perfectly Imperfect Pumpkin. And do you see any pumpkins around here? You do? Awesome, we have like a whole basket full of pumpkins, don't we? And do you see any pumpkins that look a little odd? Do you? What's odd about our pumpkin right here? It's not a it's circle. It's not, not a circle. circle. What else about that pumpkin? What else? It's um, cut. It's, it's cut. cut. And what about this? It's green. It's, it's green. green and it has stripes on it. That's kind of an odd pumpkin, isn't I know it? Why? Because it's not that ripe, maybe? It might not be very ripe. That was very a very good answer. So we're going to introduce Miss Christina in a few minutes. And I think we have somebody else here for the first time, don't we, Miss Camila? We do. Today, do you remember last time when we were all together? We had our friend missing. Penn was missing. And I think he's here with us today. Would we like to meet him today? Yeah. I'm really excited to meet him. So can we say, on the count of three, we're all going to say, Pen. And then he's going to come and join us, okay? Mm -hmm. Ready? One, two, two three. Pen. I oh. see him. You right do? There. Oh, I think, shh, guys and girls, I think he fell asleep. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I think we have to talk to him a little bit louder and wake him up. You ready to do it again? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, Pen. He fell asleep he with did. a good book. Did you ever read a really good book and you fell asleep to the story? No. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Well, let's see if we can get him awake. Hi, Pen. Can we all say hello? Hi, Pen. Well, we're sure glad you came with us this week, Penn, because we missed you. Tim. Who remembers from last time where Penn was? Amelia. He was away. Where was he? Visiting his family. He was. He was stuck on a what? Airplane. He was stuck on that silly airplane. Do you remember why he got stuck on the airplane, Maya? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. James, do you remember? Um, because he's... Busy his family. Very good. He was. he was busy saying goodbye to all his family. Well, Penn, we are so glad that you finally made it to Penn's pals. And I think we're going to take his pal and we're going to put him down on the floor with a good book. That's a good idea. Wait, what's that? Penn's telling me something. He tells me that he's brought a friend with him. He's brought another pal. Are we ready to meet Penn's pal? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Miss Donnard just told us that her name is Miss Christina Cody. So let's say, please come join us, Miss Christina. Ready? Please come join us, Miss Christina. Hi, everyone. Hello. Where's your voices? Say hello, Miss Christina. Hello, Miss Christina. Hello, I'm so glad to be here today. Who knows why I am on Pen's Pals today? <gasps> you do? Because you have the, the, the perfect pumpkin. The perfectly imperfect pumpkin? Absolutely. This was my very first book that I ever wrote. Have you ever written anything or read a really good book? Um, make way for ducklings. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Anyone else read a wonderful book? Just raise your hand if you have read a book that you like to read over and over. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Hands down. Good job. Thank you for having me on the show today. Thank you well, so thank much you for, for being coming. Here. Okay. And then boys and girls, we're going to do our story time song so we can listen really carefully. So remember, we did it last week. Put your hands in your lap. Ready? It's time to read a book. It's time to read a book. 
One, two, three. Listen, listen. Shh, shh, shh. How about one more time? One more time for the boys and girls at home. Forget that. Okay, ready? It's time to read a book. It's time to read a book. One, two, three. Listen, listen. Shh, shh, shh. Good job. Oh, right. I enjoy that song. Thank you very much. <laughs> Shall I share the story? Yep. And I'm going to help them look at the pictures while you read your story. Before we begin, I'm wondering if we have anyone here who could be a pumpkin. Do I have any volunteers to be a pumpkin? I bet all of you can do that. Can I show you how to be a pumpkin like what I have in the book? I can? Okay. So first, we're going to be perfectly round pumpkins. Can you take your arms and put them in front of you? Now touch your fingers and bend your elbows. That is a perfectly round pumpkin. I have another pumpkin in my story and he really loves the way he looks. Shouldn't we always enjoy the way we look and be happy about our smile? Yeah. So we're going to do this. Can you put your hands up like two high fives? Frame your face and smile. Very good. <laughs> now we're all so what pumpkins. was the first pumpkin? Round pumpkin. The second pumpkin is a happy face pumpkin because he's really happy about the way he looks. And then we have a pumpkin who he thinks he's a little bit better than all the other pumpkins. So are you ready for what he does? Yeah. Put your hand on your cheek. Put your chin in the air. There you go, very proud. Let's try round pumpkin again. We're gonna practice. The pumpkin that loves the way he looks Smile big, and then very proud. Very good. When I am reading the story, there is a page that has those three pumpkins on it, and I'm going to show it to you. So when we get there, when the pumpkins are speaking, I want you to start with the round pumpkin, then the smiling pumpkin, and then the proud pumpkin. Okay? All right. That would be this page. Do you see that page? Do you see a round pumpkin? Do you see the second pumpkin here? He's not smiling very big but he does love his shade of orange. Then we have a very proud pumpkin. When we get here what are we going to do boys and girls? We're going to do our motions. Very good. Oh you've got it down. <laughs> Wonderful. So let us read the perfectly imperfect Pumpkin. I wonder who it's written by. <laughs> Who's it written by? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. So in the beginning of the book, we have a title page. And the title page lets us know, here's the title of the book, but here's the author and the illustrator. What does an illustrator do? Does anyone know? Raise your hand if you know. You know. What is it? What is an it? illustrator is who draws the pictures. Very, very wonderful. Yeah. Great That's job. Right. So we have the Perfectly Imperfect Pumpkin title page. And let us begin the story. The brisk fall breeze tiptoed across Amy's nose and whispered in her ears. She slowly strolled through the pumpkin patch, lazily eyeing the rose and rows and rows of eager take me home pumpkins. With her hand firmly pressed in her mother, she asked, can I really have anyone I want? Anyone you would like, her mother replied. Do you think going to a pumpkin patch makes it really hard to decide which pumpkin? Yeah. I do too. So we have a very large pumpkin patch in the book. That's a lot of pumpkins to choose from. Don't you think? Yeah. I know. Does Amy look excited? Yeah. She's smiling? Yeah. <coughs> Let's see what happens next. Amy eagerly looked around the pumpkin patch. Large ones, small ones, round and oblong ones sat anxiously awaiting her decision. Hmm, those pumpkins are really excited. I wonder what's coming next. Get ready. Like the wind, the pumpkin seemed to be whispering to her. 
Look at me. I'm perfectly round. <laughs> okay, let's show our beautiful faces and smile. Hey, what about me? My deep shade of orange will be perfect on your front step. <laughs> now, show me proud. Take me home. I can stand tall and grand. Great job. Thank you so much for being great pumpkins. After watching Amy poke, prod, and listen to the pumpkin's request, her mother suggested, look for the pumpkin that seems lonely among this chorus of Take Me Homes. The one who may not be perfect to anyone but you. While Amy wandered with a deliberate slow pace, her eyes carefully stumbled over the perfectly round, perfectly orange squash until they rested upon him. The pumpkin barely able to hold steady his own misshapenness. Can you see him in this picture? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is she pointing yeah. to the misshapen pumpkin? Mm -hmm. She is. Hmm, those round pumpkins and those pumpkins that are beautifully orange and very proud pumpkins, they were all whispering to Amy, but she picked the one that was not perfect. Hmm. Oh, how he wanted a home, but he was too shy to whisper to Amy. He leaned ever so slightly to the right, desperately trying to straighten his yellowish-orange, egg-shaped body. He didn't have to work so hard at being noticed. Amy had already seen the oddly-shaped pumpkin and knew he was the one that needed a home. Do you think that was a nice thing for Amy to do? Yes. yes. She skipped to her new friend, dropped to her knees, and began rubbing the dust and dirt from his grooves. He seemed to straighten a little at her touch. Can all of you just straighten up just a little? That's what he did right there, nice and tall. Amy's <coughs> fingertips traced over the pumpkin. She could already see his triangle-shaped eyes and U-shaped mouth with one dangling tooth. Looking up at her mother, she whispered, this is the one I want to take home. Her mother smiled and said, I think you've made a wonderful choice. And then she carefully picked up the pumpkin, <coughs> settled him in the crook of her left arm, and extended her right hand <coughs> to Amy. Their fingers found their comfortable, loving embrace, and the three of them headed to the car. As they passed the rows and rows of perfect pumpkins, Amy smiled, the wind kissed her cheek, and the misshapen pumpkin blushed the most brilliant shade of orange as he whispered a thank you to Amy. The end. Very good. Let's give Ms. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you very much. That was wonderful, boys and girls. Can we please say thank you? Thank you, Miss Christina. Thank you for being great pumpkins and being wonderful listeners. Miss Christina, after listening to that story, that was wonderful. Thank you very much. What inspired you to write this wonderful story? Well, when I was younger, right around your age, my mother used to take me to choose pumpkins. And whenever we would go pick our pumpkin, I would always look for the perfectly round pumpkin. Do any of you do that? Find that pumpkin that's perfectly round? I used to do that. And then my mother would tell me, you need to pick the pumpkin that no one else is going to look for. And it was that moment that stuck in my head. Hmm. And so I decided that telling that story, the story of choosing things that are imperfect, is a story that needs to be heard. Oh, I like it. Boys and girls, did you ever go to the pumpkin patch? Yeah, you've gone to the pumpkin patch? And did you pick out the perfect pumpkins? What kind of pumpkins did you get? Dakota. Uh, I think Calvin did one. I think Calvin got a pumpkin. We all got a pumpkin that was round, I think. One that was round? Do you like tall ones or short ones? I like short ones. Short, short ones? ones? James, what do you like? I got the baby ones that are round and so cool. Baby round ones? Maya, what do you like? I think I got the baby ones. The baby the ones? Baby ones? Mm -hmm. And what do you like? 
There's mini ones that are kind of like those shapes, but they're a little bit tiny, but they're a little bit bigger. They're like this size. Would they be like this size? They're this size. Wow. And um, they have little painted girls on them, and, those, and they're perfectly round ones. They're perfectly round ones. Well, I went to the pumpkin patch this week, and I had a really hard time finding an imperfect pumpkin. <laughs> they were all so perfectly round. But we have a couple that are imperfect. I have a little pumpkin who's a little lopsided. He's got a very tall stem. And we already looked at our striped pumpkin, and he has a nose. Do you see his nose? Yes. I think I might make him a penguin so that Penn's pals could have a pumpkin penguin. Oh my what goodness. What do you think? I could see the eyes. You, you could? could? What, what shape eyes do you think our penguin pumpkin should have? Round. Round. Triangles. Tri triangles. Diamonds. Diamonds. Do you have diamonds at your house? I wonder <laughs> where I would find diamond eyes. You mean the shape of a diamond? Oh, okay. okay. I think circles. Circles. Me too. You two. <coughs> what? Square. Square. Triangles. Triangles. Because I can only, I can already see the triangles. You, you can could. see them. Can we have fun by singing a song before I do our craft? Would you guys like to sing a song? Yeah. Would that be all right with you? That would be great. It's a song that goes, have you ever seen, have you ever seen a pumpkin, a pumpkin, a pumpkin? Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? There's short ones and tall ones and fat ones and skinny ones. Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? Now let's think. Can we put on our imagination caps, our thinking caps? Do you know how to do that? We pretend it's a hat and we put it on our head and we tie it up tight. And it helps us think. Now think, what other kind of pumpkins would you find in a pumpkin patch? It could be a real kind of pumpkin or just something fun. Like, I think I would like to find a polka dot. A polka dotted pumpkin. Have you ever seen a pumpkin, a pumpkin, a pumpkin? Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? A polka dot and a fat one, and a tall one, and a skinny one. Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? Now raise your hand if you have another kind of pumpkin we could find. What about you in the green shirt? Um, that one. A, fat a fat one. one. We did a fat one. What about another one? Another kind. We'll do that one again. A rainbow. a rainbow. Have you ever seen a pumpkin? A pumpkin, a pumpkin. Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? There's polka dots and rainbow ones and short ones and tall ones. Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? One more. Small ones. Small ones? Small ones? Like baby ones? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you ever seen a pumpkin, a pumpkin, a pumpkin? Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? There's baby ones and tall ones and short ones and polka dot. Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? One more, Michaela. A star one. Oh, I wish I had a star one. And another one, Dakota. Uh, a froggy one. A froggy one. <laughs> and one more. Um, a, p um, a rainbow one. We did Like that. one that has like, like a real rainbow. Like a real rainbow. Like one that goes like this. Okay, so we're going to do a pink one. A pink one. A pink one. And a star one. And a, frog one. and a frog one. Okay, well, those are hard. <laughs> Have you ever seen a pumpkin, a pumpkin, a pumpkin? Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? There's star ones and froggy ones and pink, pink ones and striped ones. Have you ever seen a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch? 
Good job. Give yourself a hand. Yay. Excellent. So when you go to a pumpkin patch before Halloween or before harvest, maybe we should look for not the perfectly round pumpkin, but one that needs a lot of love. You think so? See if we can find one that needs a lot of love. Now, Miss Christina has a special craft for us, too. Are you ready to... Before we do a craft, I wanted to ask boys and girls before Miss Christina does her craft, do you have any questions for Miss Christina about being an author or about her book? Any questions? No, no questions. questions today? So today we are going to learn how to make a lunch bag pumpkin. Something that you can make at home and then you can set it up and have it throughout the fall season. This is more of a jack-o'-lantern because it has a face. So the first thing you do is, what do we need, boys and girls? A bag. We need a bag. Exactly. Can we use a big brown bag if we want to make a large pumpkin? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely, we could do that. But we're going to do a lunch bag pumpkin today. So we're going to need a bag, some paper that we can ball up into a ball, some markers, some crayons, and something to tie the bag with. I use a little hair thing, but you can use a rubber band or a twist tie. So the first step is you would draw a line <coughs> across the top of the bag about a quarter of a way down. If you're not for sure where you want that to be, you'll just do this because in the end, we are going to make a stem on the top. And the wrinkles guide you as to where to draw your line. The next step is that you're going to color your stem brown and green. So you would take your brown and green and you can color them individually or you can put the crayons together like this and color. You can do it together if you would like. Okay? So you could do it individually with your browns and then add your green after because pumpkin stems are all different colors. They're not just one solid color. Mm -hmm. And this helps you see, maybe there was a little bit of vine left in that stem. Or you can put them together and color all the way across the top and create your stem. Okay? Ooh. <laughs> now earlier, someone said, we need a face. I we do need a face. So, to do the face in your marker box, you can pick any color that would be dark enough for <coughs> your bag. Okay? So do you think this dark purple might work? Yeah. I think so too. So I am going to draw my face below the line. What shape did I use? Triangle. I use the triangle because when I do my pumpkins, that's the easier one to cut because I'm able to carve out my own pumpkins. But what other shapes did you say you could do on a face? We were talking about shapes earlier. Circle. We could do circles. What an, what's another shape? It could be the eyes. We could do squares. Diamonds. Diamond Diamonds. shape. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to do a nose and I'm just going to do a triangle that's upside down. See that? That's I'm going to color it in next, and when I do, I have a face. But I could use circles and squares and diamonds. It's however you would like to do it. So when you see a pumpkin, what are, what are the things that run down the front of the pumpkin? Do you see that? We have some green, but do you, does anyone, anyone know what it's called? Yes. Um, yeah. The lines, and a lot of people call them ribs or ribbing, all this little part right here. So, here's what you can do. You can take another dark color. It does not have to be brown. That is just the color I chose. But you may choose any color you want and start drawing lines. Do I have all perfectly straight lines? No. Do they curve a little bit? Yes. I have one I tried to be straight, but you can make them any size you want. And you can curve them as much as you want. So that is your next step. Now I wonder, what would the next step be? We're missing something for this pumpkin. What's next? Um, the orange color. <gasps> the, orange. the orange color. You want an orange pumpkin, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm coloring my pumpkin, I'm going to stop at the line that I drew in the beginning. 
So we have a face, we have it colored orange, and we have our stem section. So we have an orange pumpkin. Could we add green to our face like our orange and green pumpkin? Yes. Sure. Sure. Could we have a pink pumpkin? Yes. If we were using our imagination with our thinking cap, of course we can. We can have any color we want. So when you are done and you get to this point <coughs> and you are all happy with all of your coloring the way you want it, we need to make sure to make it good and stuffed. Hmm. What do I need to do next? What can I do next? Wrap it. <laughs> put it like wrapping, crunch up wrapping paper and put it in there. So or something. Do you how do I do it somewhere? Do you think you have to open it? To open it? Yeah. I do. Oh, we're going to open it. And a good way to open the bag is by sticking your hand in there gently. And we have it. And then you said wrapping paper. What a great suggestion. This was packing <coughs> paper. What other kind of paper can we use? Like tissue, tissue, tissue paper. Tissue paper. Yes. Newspaper. Newspaper. We have all kinds of paper. Now, when I do it, I'm not going to make a really tight ball. I'm going to make a nice, loose ball. And you can see I've been softening it up a little bit to make it easier to make a ball. Now, is that a loose ball? Yeah. yeah. That's good, though, because we need it to fit right inside our bag. So we put it right inside the bag. Then we... we Touch our lines, and I want you to see where my fingers, my fingers are in the middle, and I'm just going to push them together. <coughs> and then, then you might have to do some straightening to see your face, but what's next? Is it going to stay together, or no. do I have to, I what do I need to do? Oh, I need a band. band. So we have a twisty tie or a band, a rubber band. So we could do a rubber band to hold it. And if you had a special ribbon that you really like, and it could be a pink ribbon, a purple ribbon, a blue ribbon, a black ribbon, any color you want, or a green ribbon, you could tie that on to be part of the vine or the stem or whatever you need that to be, however you want to dress it up. And then you would have your pumpkin that you could set up around the house for you. Very good. Did you like that, boys and girls? Yeah. And before you leave today, Miss Christina brought enough paper bags and all the instructions for you to make one at home. And boys and girls in our, in our audience at home, on our website, oh, you will see the instructions of how to make this pumpkin at home, too. So we hope that you enjoyed uh, that little lesson on how to make a paper bag pumpkin. We thank you, Miss Christina. Thank you for having me. Boys and girls at home and here in our audience, thank you so much for being with us today. If you would like to know more about our um, show, our Pens Pals, you can find us on www.penspals.com or you can also find us on Facebook, 